Teeth sensitivity is the least of your concerns when whitening your teeth. The ingredients in teeth whitening bleach can actually damage the cells of our gums. It can also damage the nerves, blood vessels, and connective tissues of the tooth. Overuse of these chemicals can lead to tooth sensitivity and gum irritation. If whitening products are used incorrectly, the peroxide in the whitening gel can wear away tooth enamel and irritate the dental nerves. Another risk to teeth whitening is a chemical burn resulting in more severe pain and inflammation if the whitening product reaches the gums repeatedly. And there have been reports that whitening strips may even strip tooth enamel. And tooth enamel cannot be, and I quote, grown back or recovered. Tooth enamel is the hardest tissue in the body. Problem is, it's not living tissue, so it can't naturally be regenerated. Once it's gone, it's gone. That's why it's so important to care for your teeth. There's no recovery. Bite toothpaste bits have been in my household since summer of last year, and they also just came out with a teeth whitening kit, which I'm so excited about because I already love their toothpaste. Bite's teeth whitening kit is made without harmful chemicals and is safe for sensitive teeth. It's also cruelty-free, vegan, and lightly flavored with natural peppermint oil. Plus, it comes in a glass jar with a compostable applicator, so there's no alcohol, no propylene glycol, and no parabens or synthetic dyes or flavors. If you want to try this teeth whitening kit or any of Bite's natural toothpaste bits, Bite is offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Just go to trybite.com slash digest or use code digest at checkout to claim this deal. If you're listening to this and you have gut issues, well, keep listening because it turns out everything you think you knew about probiotics may be wrong. You guys, it can get pretty confusing with the market saturated with probiotic everything. I mean, there's even probiotic tortilla chips. Come on now, really? (laughs) I need to give you my personal take and share what I got introduced to back in October of 2022. And that is Seed. Seeds DS01 plant-based capsule is not only a probiotic, but a prebiotic. There are 24 different strains of specifically formulated probiotics targeted for digestive health, gut immunity, as well as additional systematic benefits. One of my favorite things about Seed is that it's a capsule within a capsule. That's right. There's actually a prebiotic capsule encapsulating the probiotic inside, which ensures that the probiotics actually make it to your colon with 100% survivability. But you may be asking, so what does Seed DSO-1 actually do? Well, many think of pre and probiotics as only gut support, but it does way more than that. It actually supports the gut barrier, which is where most of our immunity is and a vital part of our health. But it also supports other areas of the body for whole body benefits such as skin health, heart health, and micronutrient synthesis. So get the real deal in a symbiotic, one that's backed by clinical trials and scientific data. So get the real deal in a symbiotic, one that's backed by clinical trials and scientific data. Visit seed.com slash digest and use code digest to receive 30% off your first month of Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic. That's seed.com slash digest and use code digest. I hope you guys love it. 
let's talk about aflatoxins. First off, what are they? Many aren't even aware they probably consume them every single day in their favorite healthy foods. Yes, I said healthy foods or what many may think of as healthy food. So today we are going to go over what aflatoxins are, what is the most common food it is in among the the others, of course, and what aflatoxins can do to the body and how to avoid or at least minimize them in your diet. Welcome back to this week's Bite of Knowledge on the Digest This podcast, where every Monday I share what's called Bite of Knowledge, what are smaller mini episodes. So I hope you guys are enjoying both types of episodes as much as I enjoy recording them. But before we get into today's episode, can you guys do me a huge favor and pause this episode and rate and review it? It takes like two seconds and it truly helps the podcast get out into more ears and helps it grow overall. I truly appreciate all your support and I'm so thankful for such a wonderful community. Okay, so what is aflatoxin? Or what is it like? What are aflatoxins? What is it? What are they? So, aflatoxin is a type of mold that is considered a human carcinogen. Now, if that didn't get your attention, keep listening. It's found in certain commonly eaten foods. The most common and the ones containing the highest concentration of it are peanuts, peanut butter, and corn. There are actually at least 13 different types of naturally occurring aflatoxin toxic molds that researchers have been able to identify. Of the 13 species, the type called aflatoxin B1 is considered the most toxic, capable of causing health problems such as liver disease and even cancer among autoimmune responses and autoimmune disorders in addition to digestive disorders. Now, it has been shown that liver disease is one of the major causes of consuming aflatoxins through our food supply, yet still many aren't aware of it. Okay, so if you want to get technical, aflatoxin is a type of mycotoxin, which is produced by two different species of mold. There are natural molds found all around the world and concentrated most in the human food supply in areas with wet and warm climates. It's also possible for aflatoxin mold to form in grains. After consumption, aflatoxin turns into metabolites, M1 and M2, which have high carcinogenic potential. And the International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified aflatoxin B1 as a, quote, group one carcinogen. And as previously mentioned, aflatoxin seems to specifically affect the liver and the ways that cells reproduce, which alter the way that other substances are metabolized and eliminated, resulting in the potential of increased food allergy reactions. Now, obviously, there are many different types of molds that can grow on food, But aflatoxin has gained more attention than others because studies have identified evidence of its potential for causing carcinogen effects. In animal studies, high level of aflatoxin consumption has been shown to be poisonous. And in human observation studies, aflatoxin consumption correlates with an increased risk for certain illnesses and health issues. Over the last 100 years, there have also been several occurrences where large population of livestock like cattle, ducks, chickens, etc. have died due to contamination of their food supply especially peanut flour or cottonseed. Now, unfortunately, this toxin makes its way into literally probably some of the most very, very, very popular foods. Like I said, peanut butter and peanuts are one of them, and they are so-called healthy foods among a lot of health enthusiasts. But the level of aflatoxin contamination, you know, will will vary, of course, from food to food and even from just geographical location where it's grown and all the, there's a bunch of different factors. But needless to say, 
peanuts and peanut butter and corn. Again, those are just highly consumed products in the world, really. And they're cheap too. And they, they do seem like a healthy food, right? You, you would think like peanuts, peanut butter, corn, like this is a whole food. This is great. But just uh, the more that we dig into it, and I mean, we like all the scientists and just people in today's society in general, um, the more I personally uh, just want to stay away from it. So what can we do to avoid this toxin and lower the risk uh, for symptoms it can cause, uh, which I will get into in a second. So uh, as mentioned, aflatoxin enters the body through certain foods, especially peanuts, corn and grains, and legumes. I want to include that. Um, So making changes to our diet is, of course, the first step in avoiding this toxin. And secondly, certain supplements can also help the body remove it and detox from it. So how badly a person is affected will depend on several factors such as their current state of health, how often they consume these foods, their digestive system, and overall quality of their diet. Now, there are two ways that aflatoxin contamination usually occurs. One, either someone consumes large amounts at once and experiences, and I quote, poisoning, or they slowly acquire it over time in smaller quantities if it's a regular occurring food they consume, which is most likely the case. Um, According to the FDA, poisoning is relatively rare, but more dangerous and can lead to problems like liver cancer, mental uh, impairments, digestive reactions, hemorrhages, and even uh, malabsorption. Now, speaking long-term over a long course of time, some of the symptoms that aflatoxin exposure can cause include food allergies, autoimmune disease reactions, inflammation that affects the heart, damage to the digestive organs, including the liver and kidneys, possibly a higher risk of liver cancer, viral uh, hepatitis, or parasite infections, even growth and development impairment. And then, I mean, those are pretty serious. Even like the non-serious stuff, uh, a lot of people experience skin reactions. They have have really intense acne when they're consuming peanuts. And so again, these are all just things to to know and be aware of and be more knowledgeable on. Now, experts believe that the biggest threat of aflatoxin to human health globally is the contamination of corn because corn tends to be grown in humid climates that are likely to have contaminated soils. And don't just think of whole corn. Think of corn flour, corn syrup, corn starch, corn oil, etc. Anything derived from corn. So corn is snuck into everything these days. And in fact, citric acid you see on food labels is often derived from corn as well, as well as the dextrose and maltodextrin, which are created and derived from also corn. Aflatoxin in peanuts are another major concern for the same reasons. Peanuts are consumed in high amounts all over the world. Plus, they are used in so many other types of processed foods, such as peanut butter, cereals, packaged snacks like cookies, crackers, chocolate, ice cream, etc. All right, so here's just another reason to soak and and sprout your grains, nuts, and legumes. So some studies have found that soaking and fermenting grains and nuts can lower the presence of aflatoxin significantly, and you may already be doing this to your grains, and if you are, you get a gold star. (laughs) A study published in the International Journal of Food Microbiology found that soaking, sprouting, and fermenting grains, nuts, and legumes minimizes aflatoxin's effect because of the lactic acid. Lactic acid produced during fermentation reduces mold growth and aflatoxin production because of the competition uh, for nutrients between bacterial cells and the mold. This is just so fascinating to me. I hope it is for you too. Do I still have you guys? All right, stick with me here. So lactic acid seems to ultimately bind to aflatoxins in grains and legumes and cut off 
its energy supply. In addition, soaking your grains and nuts also makes them makes their nutrients more bioavailable. So definitely don't skip the soaking. Okay, so we just addressed how you can minimize aflatoxin in your food, but are you wondering what else you can do to avoid aflatoxin symptoms? Here are a few tips for purchasing and handling foods plus supplements that can boost the the detoxing effects. So first of all, don't keep grains and nuts like corn, peanuts, almonds, for example, for long periods of time. Try consuming them ideally within a couple of months. Secondly, buy the freshest ingredients you can. Ideally, those grown close to your location and not shipped overseas. Reputable small sellers who grow organic crops are most likely to harvest them at the the right time and keep them stored properly because they just don't have to go through all of the shipping that you would get from a you know a larger company and brand also storing your grains that again includes like rice corn nuts um, store them in places that are dry and cool to prevent mold growth you can even freeze them to prolong freshness and if you bake with nut flours you should always store your nut flour in the refrigerator after opening this also goes for nut butters I always keep my open jars of nut butters in the refrigerator door. And there's also talk that eating detoxifying vegetables like carrots and celery reduces the carcinogenic effect of aflatoxins and helps cleanse the liver. Some supplements that can boost the detoxification effects, they cleanse the liver and improve digestion. These ones are milk thistle, marshmallow root, and dandelion root, which all have been shown and known for their liver detoxing effects. And you can just get these in tea form. They sell milk thistle tea, marshmallow root tea, as well as dandelion root tea, which I absolutely love. Well, I hope this was a helpful piece to listen to on this fine Monday or whatever day you chose to listen to this on. And I never want to scare you or place fear in you. These episodes are just simply to bring more awareness in order to educate you so that you can better your health and your family's health. Knowledge is power. See you guys this Wednesday for a very special interview. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a resonant media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Chris McComb. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.